Now that we've installed Zotero, created an account, and configured it based on our needs, let's figure out what it's all about. Zotero basically exists in three places. On your desktop as a software application, in your browser as an extension, and in your word processing program, well, if you have Word or LibreOffice. And all of these places are talking to each other. This video is just going to focus on the software application piece. This is my version of Zotero. I've been using it for almost a decade, so I have a ton of stuff in here. The Zotero window is divided into three main sections. The far left side is made up of folders and subfolders which you create. These can be divided by courses, projects, topics, whatever helps you stay organized. You can have your own library, so this is stuff that only you can see, or you can create group libraries where you can share information. The middle section includes a list of items you've imported and saved. The basic information includes an icon representing what type of resource this is, whether it's a book, an article, a website, a video, a PowerPoint. It also includes the title, an author or creator, the year, the publication, if it's a journal, and the date that you added this item into Zotero. You can also see that there is a little drop down in most of these. This indicates that there's more information within this record. So in this case, I have a note that I've added. This has a PDF and a link directly back to the website where I found the article. Now my favorite feature about this middle section is that it's super customizable. You can change any of the options you see here. You can remove them or you can add to them. In order to do this, you click on this tiny little icon up here in the corner. And here you can check things or uncheck things. So I have title, creator, year, publication, and date added. If I didn't want publication, I just uncheck it and now I've got a lot more space. You also can uh, change the size of each column depending on how much information you have and what you want to be able to see. It's so fun. The far right section includes information about the individual resource. If you're importing information from online databases or websites or an online catalog, all of the information that's over here was automatically included. I didn't type any of it, which is just amazing. Now, I love, love, love Zotero, but it doesn't always get things right when it's importing. So it's always a good idea to double check to make sure what it's imported is correct. This is important because if you use Zotero to create your reference list later on, it's pulling information directly from this particular section. And if it's wrong here, it will be wrong in your reference list and that will be sad. Now here is an awesome little bonus tip for any of us who use APA. Many article and book titles get imported into Zotero in what's called title case. It looks like this, where every word is capitalized. APA does not like this. It needs to be in sentence case where only the proper nouns and first letter of a sentence or the first letter in the subtitle are capitalized. In order to change this in Zotero, you just mouse over the title, right click, do transform text, and select sentence case. You do have to watch out for subheadings and any proper nouns because Zotero will change those. And everything here that has the little blue box that's showing up means it's customizable. That means you can change it if it got imported incorrectly or you can add extra information if you need. This section also allows you to add notes. If there's any sort of extra information you want to include, you can include tags. Tags are similar to subject headings. And sometimes these get included automatically, especially if you're downloading stuff from a library catalog or some of the article databases. If you want to use these, great. If you don't, just ignore it. You can also add related items. So if this is an article that you think should be also tied into something, maybe in a different folder, you can just click the add button, go to a different folder and connect them. All right, the next little area we'll talk about is this bar that runs across the top. Over here, you can create new folders, what Zotero calls collections. This one again is the individual, the only you can see, and this one is for group libraries. If you are going to add an item manually, that means you're not importing it from a database or from online, you can click on this, select the type of item it is, and just enter in everything manually. I tend to try to never ever do that because almost everything you can get can be imported. 
This little magic wand allows you to enter in a unique identifier, whether that's an ISBN, which is books, DOI, which is articles, or a PMID, which is a identifier specific to PubMed. You enter in the number there and then bam, it pops up with your book title or article and all the extra citation information like magic. If you want to add notes to either a folder or to a particular article, this is what you would do. A standalone note just is going to be here in the folder in particular. It's not associated with a particular article. If you want to add a note to a particular article, you can either go over here to where there's notes or add a child note. You can add attachments, say if you have a PDF, you can add it in there. And unless you have sort of an insane Zotero collection like I do, or you're doing a lot of research projects, or I don't know, maybe you just really, really love saving books and articles, you probably won't ever need the advanced search. This will help you find information within your own Zotero library. Very cool if you need it. If not, don't worry about it. If you wanna do a basic search, this little search box here works really well. This funny little tool over here is neat. If you have a citation and you maybe want to find the original source, whether that's a PDF, the abstract, something like that. So you select your article or your citation and go to the, either the Crossref or the Google Scholar and then bam, takes you where the original citation is. Very cool. And finally, this is the sync button. So Tarot is very good about syncing on its own. It syncs every time you open it and when you add new items. But if something seems weird or stuck, try to sync it and that may solve your issue. Up at the top are the menu buttons. These replicate some of what we've already covered, so I'm not really going to go into depth. I do want to point out the import and export buttons here. This is great if you're already using a reference manager and you want to get your stuff into Zotero, or if you decide you don't like Zotero and you want to move to a different reference manager, you can export your entire library. The other option I want to point out is under edit and its preferences. And this is how you set up the look and feel of Zotero and how you can select your preferred citation style. Okay. Whew. You should now have a pretty good idea of how Zotero organizes things and how it works once you have items added to your various libraries. We're going to cover how to import items and how to create bibliographies in separate videos.